Microsoft Office offers you a lot of options for quizzing or assessing your students. To begin, let's open up Microsoft Forms and select New Quiz here in the top left. Now that we have a new quiz, we want to edit it with all of the questions that we want to assess our students on. To begin, start by giving it a title, and this should be something that you can search later. When you have a lot of forms or quizzes, it can be difficult to find what you need, so make sure you choose a title that's easily searchable. Now I'm going to select a template, and I like this one, and we're going to add our first question. Let's start with a multiple choice. I'm going to say, what is 2 plus 2? Now that I have my question, obviously I need some correct answers. I can add as many options as I want using the plus add option at the bottom, and I can add pictures or even leave comments for the people that chose this particular question. This is a great way to give automatic feedback to your students. Just because you added a quiz doesn't mean it's something that has to go in your gradebook. It could be something just to show students how they would do if they were to take the quiz today. So you may want to give them hints on how they could better solve this problem if they got it incorrect. Now that I have all my correct answers, I want to add a point value to this. If I don't add a point value, it'll still give the students the question, but it won't grade it. And I want to make it required. I have an option to add a picture here, if that'll help. When I select the picture icon, I have a couple options. First, I can either add a picture or a video. If I add a video, this is very helpful if I have an instructional YouTube video that I want my students to watch and then answer questions on, or I can use image search and upload from OneDrive or my computer. Simply select the image you want and click add. These are all Creative Commons licensed, so I am free to use them. Now I have my question and it is required for my students to answer. So I can choose the ellipses here and I have a couple options such as adding a subtitle or adding a math option. To add a new question, simply push Add New, and we're going to add a text question this time. What is 5 times 127? Now that this is a quiz, I'm given an option to add a correct answer, in this case 635, and I want to be aware of how my students might answer this. So I may want to put it in text form and in number form, and this avoids me having to go back through all of my quizzes later, as they will auto-grade. I can use the ellipses to add a subtitle, restrictions on their answers, or even a math answer, which gives my students the ability to write an equation. So now if I choose the ellipses and select math, I'm given an option to enter an equation. When I use the drop down menu, I can select any math symbols or functions that I would want to use and allow my students to type in a more comfortable manner. Now that everything is correct, I'm going to go and add a new question. So the next type of question we have is a ratings question, and this allows students to rate things from 2 to 10 stars or hearts or anything that I would like. And I want to make sure that I'm using my subtitles to be very specific with how they're going to grade this. So one is the lowest and five is the highest. So now I have the choice to change this from stars to numbers or ribbons, thumb likes, however I want my students to answer this particular question. So when I select one, such as stars, and I choose how many levels they have to grade this out of, I want to make sure that I update my points value on each question as it automatically flips from the previous question. I can also enter a label to help students understand the question better. The next type of question we're going to add is a date. So this is very helpful if you have student conferencing or something like that that you want to schedule. Or I could say, what date did we discuss math? So in this case, I give them the directions, and then when they go to put their answer in, they're given a calendar to choose from. Add new and use our drop down menu to see even more options, such as ranking. In this case, I might want to put things in a specific order, such as when things happen chronologically, or perhaps the number value from highest to lowest. And again, you want to make sure that students understand the question entirely making sure that I'm giving them all of the options. X plus seven, let's just make up some numbers here. George Washington's age. And a random number, 546. I can add as many options as I want. 
And again, you want to check your point value and whether or not you want this question to be required. The next option is a Likert. This is a rubric type of assessment where I can change the columns or the values that I want students to go ahead and rank. And you can see when I start putting in answers, it gives me suggestions. And I say, yep, I like those. I'm going to click add all. If there's an answer I don't want, I can simply select the trash can to remove it. I can use the plus sign to add more columns, or I can use the add statement sign to add more statements. So everything here is editable. So when I update my statements, my students can then rank these. Again, using add statement, I can put as many options as I would like and give the correct point value as well. Next, I'm going to use my drop down menu and I have an upload file. This is a nice option if students have done work or created something and you want them to upload it, such as your homework from last night or your project. And I can tell them specifically what I want them to upload and I can even restrict the file type. I can choose how many files they can submit and how big the files can be. Using the ellipses, I can select file type and I want to uncheck anything I don't want submitted. So I'm going to allow students to submit a PDF or an image in this case, and that's all that they can upload. Next, we have our net promoter score, and this just gives me an option. Finally, under add new, you have a section option. This helps you break up your assessment or your form and allows students to complete their work chunked out rather than be feeling overwhelmed by the number of questions that they have. So I'm going to add a new section and add just one question in here so that we can see what that looks like. I'm going to use add all because they've given me some good suggestions and make sure that you choose the correct answer. If you don't choose a correct answer, it cannot grade this for you automatically and you'll have to go back and grade it yourself. Now when I use preview at the top of the screen, this is what my students will see. I have an option to take this as a student so that I can make sure everything works as well as it should. And you can see things like immersive reader are included on every question. So now I've taken this and I've uploaded a couple things and I'm going to choose next. So you see it's broken up into the two different sections. So again, my students are only seeing a few options at a time. When I submit, I get a submission screen and this can be edited later. Now as a student, I'm immediately given my results, including a notification on questions that need to be graded by the teacher. From a teacher perspective, if I go to responses, I can see the average score. I could download all of my answers in Excel, or I could review all of the answers. Using the ellipses on the right, I also have the option to delete all responses and clear this out for my next class. If I choose review answers, I'm now given a summary of what every student submitted and I have an option then to score their assessment. I can either do it manually, I can add comments, and again it lists whether it's incorrect or correct and I have the option to override any of these. So in this case I'm going to give the students feedback on what they did so they can immediately see it. Students will also see any correct answer that I've listed so they can check that with their answer and see what they may have done incorrectly. As I go through and review each of these, remember my file upload, I can give it a score and when I select the file upload, it creates a new window so that I can see the work the student submitted. Again, using that talk bubble on the right hand side, I can add comments to students so they get immediate feedback on their assessment. Anything that's over the point value that I've already given is assigned as extra credit. So I do have that option. So I'm going to go ahead and give this extra credit and move down to correct the rest of my form. When I'm done and I go back to the top, you can see that my entire points have updated. I can go left to right to review each individual student or my favorite is to review by questions. So you can look at all of the questions compared to one another. That way you're grading one thing at a time. When I'm done, I can go back and cycle through and I can choose 
review answers. You can see my average score has been updated based on the grading that I've just submitted. And it's important to know that you must post the scores before students can see them. So you can do this individually or just check the box by name and post all the scores of your class at once. Once the scores are posted, now students get those and those scores are locked into your form. How do you get the form to your students? Choose collect responses. And now I have the option to add a group, an individual, a channel. I can change that only people in my organization can respond. I can even create a QR code or embed this assessment right into Schoology. So I'm gonna go ahead and embed this into Schoology. I choose embed and copy. And on my Schoology page, I'm gonna create a new page. I'm gonna call this my math quiz and use insert content here at the top. I'm making sure that I'm inserting from the web and the fact that this is not a static image, but rather interactive media. When I paste that in and create, I can go back to that page, which is down here, and you can see that the quiz is embedded directly into my Schoology page. Since I already took that quiz, it was completed. Under Collect Responses, you also have an option to share this as a template for other teachers. So if you've created a quiz that's really good, go ahead and share it out with your peers. You can use the ellipses to print a hard copy or leave feedback. So if somebody shared a template with you and you want to give them feedback, you can do that. Also, I have my settings option under the ellipses on the right, where I can show results automatically to students or turn that off until grading is completed. I can update who has permission to fill out the form. And I have other options such as a start date and end date, a time duration for students to be able to take this. I can shuffle the questions or even give them a progress bar.